breaking is going to get that big. It's got to start here in Korea. It might not be perfect in everyone's eyes, but it's like the first step towards something big, I think. Sitähän mä oon kuullut koko pienen ikäni, että mä en nyt oikein siinä töihin, että mitä te nyt oikein leikitte, breikkipojat, että niinku. Something's gonna have to change, or we're gonna be living like this forever. I don't like. <laughs> I love. I love to dancing. There's a lot of in it, in breaking. That's it's worth way more than money. That's so true. But there's a lot in life that's worth way more than yourself. What's the question again? <laughs>
they start to make me believe that my dream can actually happen, that breaking is going to get that big. Everywhere else, every other culture or lifestyle or, or even a sport or artist, they all have ways to make money. They know how to do it. We're all of those things. This guy, uh, he emailed a, a big university from Australia and said, why do you not consider b-boying as an official dance, like a legitimate dance or art form? And the reply was, because every legitimate art form or dance form that's not a fad, that's not just a thing that we're doing, has some type of governing body or an association that looks out for everything, that defines it, that does what's in best in, in the interest of that culture. Other people have always said this, the way that you know something's a true art is if you know how to judge it. And people say, you, don't, you can't judge art. Are you crazy? Art institutions, they have, the reason why these paintings are up on the wall is because they have a specific way of what it means and how to judge it. So everything has a way to judge, not just people sitting there saying, I think they won or they won. You know what I mean? Right now I'm gonna go pick up my passport, get my visa for China. I have one Chinese visa. It's already checkmarked, means it's done. I have a second one. I guess so. I guess breaking was my only real job I've ever really had. Youth programs, I started doing that when I went to college. I took recreation and programming, so I started open up, opening up practice spots for, for breaking all over Toronto. But when I was younger, I, like I lived with my like, you know, mother. I didn't have to worry about rent. I was like a, you know, kind of like a bum. 2006, got my own place. That's when it was like really hard, you know what I mean, to make a living. And like I had to like try to really bust my, bust my ass just to like make like rent. Went into like debt because of credit cards and yeah, it was pretty tough. Yeah, I never really cared about money though. That's the thing. So, you know. Right now I live in Seoul, Korea, and in uh, the Itaewon Foreigner District. Like, you know what, I owned my own company, I had my own office in Toronto, you know, and I did my own big events. I realized that there's no way that things could change or make things any, grow any bigger, and I, I was like, is this how I'm gonna live the rest of my life, trying to like beg sponsors for, for money? I don't think like NBA has to go to, you know, like looking to like go to the sponsors. We should like to sponsor our, our, our game. Like I'm pretty sure it's the other way around. But here, it's like if you have a dream and you have like the connections, you can make anything happen in Korea. Korea itself is a trendsetter, a trendsetting country. If there's anywhere in the world that we can make B-Boy become professional with judging system and scoring system and set a new standard, it would have to be Korea. I miss my crew. I miss my family, I miss my friends. I need to like sacrifice and do things to accomplish something for the greater good, you know? And I believe that if B-Boying grows big all over the world, I know I've done my part in this world, you know? This company is responsible for, for B-Boying to grow. They really believe in like what, I, what I'm doing and what my vision is, you know what I mean? I was watching uh, Flea Rock versus No Name and reading the comments. Flea Rock won. The Abstract was the only judge, but No Name really ripped it. I'm not saying who won. There's no official standard, right? So if you think about it, right? Abstract, his style is about freestyle, flow, and finesse, right? So if you think about just that, then Flea Rock had more flow, finesse, and like freestyle, right? He probably really thought that Three Rock won, you know, based on his perspective. My last battle was three weeks ago at AFN, a Friday night in Korea. I lost. I, I wanted answers. I wanted to know why I lost. I, I did feel a bit confused. We 
take it personal. You take your dance personal when and when somebody decides that yeah your expression or your way of expressing the dance was not good enough. There are some days where the reasons are quite obvious. If you know you crashed or if you know the your opponent was clearly better than you. But then there are other days when you're a bit more equally matched and so, sometimes you feel it, it, the judge's decision goes down to just opinion. As a dancer, you're subjected to a subjective decision-making process. Even though you signed up for it, if it goes against you, eh, it kind of pisses you off just a little bit. Currently, judging has been inconsistent, opinion-based, unexplained. L lately, judging has been a bit of a mystery. First time the judging system was made into a concept was in 1999. Uh, I organized one of the first competitions or b-boy events in Toronto called Back to the Underground. And at that time there was no competitions, there was no judging systems, there was it was only pretty much ciphers before that. So I started thinking, how am I going to judge this, right? So me and my crew started talking about it and we thought that it would be really stupid if we just get a couple of guys to sit down together and just say hey I think he won or they won like that would be retarded so we said okay there has to be some criteria we said there's the people who think foundation is the most important there's people who think originality is the most important there's people who think all the dynamics and blobs and tricks is the most important you know um, there's people who think that you know being clean and not making any mistakes is the most important and there's people who think that it's all about like how you respond in a battle foundation is about having that swagger and dancing with either A, complete musicality confined only to the music, B, footwork or sporadic or energy, or C, about finesse and suave. Next category is originality or artistry. Okay, originality is about having your own creativity or an unique individuality. Having either your own character, your own style, your own technique, or your own concepts. And even possibly flipping things around to make it your own. Dynamics is about having very distinguishable or observable qualities in your moves, such as a high level of, balance, speed, strength, energy, complexity, something dangerous or that can have a risk of injury, or even flexibility. Execution is about executing five components. You must execute your confidence, a rhythm, you have to execute your style, no stumbles. You gotta execute your technique, your moves, no crashes. And you gotta execute something fresh or new every round, no repeating. The battle category is about two things. Having your confidence, and not just any confidence, but swagger, meaning aiming your style and your moves at your opponent. And two, responding, meaning taking what your opponent does and either outdoing it or adding on. There's one judge assigned to each perspective. Each judge is giving a score from one to five only according to his or her category. And the winner is determined by who wins the majority of the five perspectives. Well, I, I think I would go to the battle with our system. And the reason why is because I know what people are looking at. I know what I need to do to win the battle. You know, I know that I need to have foundation to a certain level. I know that you know, my dynamics have to be on point. I need to be artistic. Whereas if I go to a battle where anyone's judging, it could be you know, the other crew's friends. They could, they could be like paying off the judge. Who knows? You know, it's not, <laughs> it's not you know, concrete. There's so many different directions you can go into and you don't always know if the judges can relate to your style. I mean there's flexi styles, there's power moves, there's guys who focus more on rocking, foundation, everyone has their own opinion. And I think there's been a lot of beef all around the world with people trying to say that their mindset is the right way or their way is the best way. 
And I think the R16 judging system, the new one, the hour system, brings everything together and it accounts for everything. Boxing does it. You can look and say, hey, that guy whipped that guy's butt. But the experts look at him and be like, nah, man, dude on the right took it. Why? And they can tell you why. They can tell you why. In b-boy, you can't do that. But then, even if you speak to the judges, they don't even remember what happened in the battle. Like there's so many rounds, everything just goes past, goes past, goes past. Like we all understand how the human mind works. You can't remember a 20 minute battle and decide in five seconds who's the winner. Aususysteemin tuomarointi oli äärimmäisen helppoa, koska meillä oli se iPodin kädessä ja siinä oli sitten, piti vaan painaa nappulaa heti kun oli rani mennyt. Ja monesti kun itse tuomaroi ilman, ilman systeemejä, niin pitää tehdä muistinpanoja ja itse rustailla sinne mitä ikinä tekeekään ja sitten seuraa samaan aikaan, että mitä tapahtuu. Ja periaatteessa itse on täysin vastuussa siitä koko tilanteesta. Tosiaan kun se oli kavennettu se perspektiivi, mitä katsotuomarina, niin ei tarvinnut sillä lailla vertailla, että jos tämä tekee tuota noin ja sitten toinen tekee jotain ihan eri tyyliä, niin miten ne sitten, kumpi niistä on parempi, se on aina se hankala juttu tässä breakin tuomaroinnissa. Et esimerkiksi mulla se execution oli mun kategoria, niin sitten mä katsoin, että jos veti hyvin tai jos se crash oli menemään, niin sitten sen perusteella annoin omat niin kuin, arvosanat sitten tuosta. With the hour system, they can tell you. Okay, in your second round, this was sloppy, your execution was off, or whatever was wrong. So you can track everything, it breaks everything down. Like, okay, let's say today's judge is a power mover, right? Oh, I gotta do power moves to win the battle. It's not like that, you know exactly what you have to do to win a battle. The, our judging system has got rules. It, it, it's consistent, it's, it's, it's explainable. You get answers, uh, answers you can understand, answers you can work on. I think it has the potential to take the dance to the next level. For B-Boys, we're just gonna we're just gonna go through the same cycle, talking about how thing is, how it's bullshit, it's someone got robbed or whatever, but they're just gonna get completely lost. And that's exactly pretty much I think what happened in Korea. Uh, right now we're gonna go to meet up with my homeboy from all the way live that does all the way live in Power Surge. Uh, we're gonna have a meeting with him and dinner to see if he'd be interested in implementing our systems at all the way live Manila. It's definitely a step in the right direction. It'd be very uh, beneficial for us to have a system like this um, as a community, um, just because again we're, they're they're. There isn't anything, you know. I, I talked to like people from like who were like fans of gamblers because gamblers were winning everything back then. And the reason why they like gamblers because they were the best crew. They won world championships. And when you look at gamblers opposed to other crews, they have better power. A lot of times, what happens is, um, let's bring our, our mom or an aunt to a jam, and guess what happens? They'll be really excited for like the first two battles, and then what? Right. But one day they would lose against. Uh, let's say Rivers crew, and then the, the fans would be like, why did they lose? Well, because Rivers has better foundation, better dancing. Okay, so then they're like, okay, it's about dancing. And the next time, Rivers would lose against Gamblers, again. And they'd be like, what is going on here? What it does is it just takes that guessing out and makes it like, okay, this guy has good foundation. This guy has, you know, good battle tactics. You know, there used to be so many viewers in Korea watching Breaking, but because there was no way to understand Breaking, then they just stopped watching. They lost respect for Breaking. And so I guess that, that'd be the good thing about it, is that like, it, it, the audience isn't confused. There isn't like in, in, in darkness. 
It just makes it a little bit easier to understand what is happening, you know? They can be entertained. They can be like, this is really entertaining, but you can't really respect it because you, there's nothing in it that you can acknowledge, that you can be like, this is official, this is how it is. There's actual deep thought and philosophy. Nothing is concrete right now. If you at least have one base, you know, the judging system, then you can have your trends on top of that, that's fine, things can change. But if you have something concrete, then you can have something that, you know, can evolve but yet stay the same the whole time. Jonkinlaiset standardit meillä pitää olla mun mielestä tuomaroinnissa, että tyylejä rupeaa olla jo niin paljon erilaisia ja, ja niin kuin jokainen tekee vähän mitä sattuu, niin se on meidän niin kuin vastuulla päättää se, että mikä nyt sitten on breikki ja mikä ei toisaalta, vaikka niin kuin totta kai se luovuus ja omaperäisyys on niin kuin yksi tärkeimmistä jutuista tässä koko lajissa. So like this judging system is like the trunk of a tree. And there can be tons of branches, you know, there can be tons of leaves, different colors and stuff. It's no problem. It, it makes it more beautiful, you know, but it needs a base. B-boying is not a sport. It's not. It's, it's a culture. It's a, it's a dance. It's an art, you know? That's what it is. It's like saying, like, uh, when people are fighting on the street, a street fight, it's like saying, that's a sport. I think you have to agree that it does have sporting aspect to it because you have, you know, two crews, two teams going against each other head to head, just like soccer, basketball, something like that. Tämä on tämä yksi ikuisuus kysymys, että onko se taidettava urheilua. Mun mielestä molempia ja enemmän taidetta. Ja siitä huolimatta, mä ja mun ryhmä treenataan kuin ammattilaisurheilijat. Ja se on mun mielestä urheiluaspekti on enemmän se treeni, treeniasuus siinä. Ja Ehkä se kilpailuus joo, mutta niin kuin kulttuuri sen taustalla on kaikista tärkeää. Jos sitä ei ole, niin sitten, sitten ei ole paljon jäljellä. B-boy is like a language. It's like it's everything, you know what I mean? But a professional competition, once you put judges there, you put time limit, you put a cash prize, you put a clear winner or loser, it becomes in every definition a sport when you make it like that. Taekwondo, right? It's not a sport. It's a martial art. But once they go into a professional Taekwondo competition where there are rules and judges and everything, that is a sport now, because it's a game. We're not trying to like take over the b-boy scene and make it, you know, like only battling on ESPN or something like that, you know? We're, we want to keep the rawness. We understand that it's an art form and everything like that. Um, what I think about Amjad and the Cir and Circle Kings is I think that's that's dope, right? I think it's a good, it's a good idea because Yo, know, we need to have events that aren't just about the competition. So, like I just said, yeah, there's different types of battles, and I think it should be like that, you know? There's raw stuff, you know, there's the huge showy stuff, but I think it can work together, you know, if people try hard enough to, you know, let room for, you know, other people's views and stuff like that. And, you know, it depends how b-boys want to do this, how they want to approach it. We're not trying to say, this is how it is. We want to get everyone's opinion and make it best for everyone together, you know. The main point is that we need to set up bars and levels. Like, for example, in the skateboarding industry, right, it was only because of that competitions, those huge half pipes and that level that brought the media attention. And as skating got so big, now the underground scene with that filming and that steez and that just skating on the street is now huge too, right? The pro and the underground, right? And they're both, they, they, they need each other. Yeah, I heard some people say that, yeah, b-boy shouldn't make money and, you know, they shouldn't make money off b-boy. And, and it's really easy to say when you have options. You have like jobs or you have like, a, you come from a rich family or whatever. Yeah, it's so simple to say, but when you don't have anything, you don't have even like a father, you don't have, you know, an education, you don't have any money, but all you have is your, your ability to dance, you know what I mean? Then you, you know, and you're working so hard to dance and that's all, because that's all you've ever known while growing up and that's what saved you from, from being in trouble, from being in a gang, you know? And now it's like people are recognizing you for your skills, you know, it's, it's easy for someone who doesn't, who's not, who's not in that situation to be like, oh, you shouldn't make money and whatever, but that's not true. You know, if you ever went to the Philippines and you saw the b-boys there that do it and they don't have anything, you know what I mean? You're telling them that they can't make money, you know what I mean? So what should they do? Should they go, telling them to go beg, you know, and not get money from shows?
เต้นเพื่อเปิดหมวกครับเก็บเงินฮะเก็บเงินไปซื้อของเป็นของตัวเองครับอยากเต้นไปเรื่อยชอบการเต้นครับสนุกดีครับซิกโก้ครับอยากเต้นเก่งๆครับอยากมีอนาคตเป็นของตัวเองครับอยากมีครอบครัวเป็นของตัวเองครับรักครับผมรักเกี่ยวกับการเต้นการเต้นอ่ะเราเต้นทุกวันทุกวันมันก็ไม่น่าเบื่อดีกว่าเอาไปยุ่งกับพวกยาเสพติดพวกอะไรพวกนี้ยในนั้นในนั้นถึงมีทำไหมมีมีทำนะแต่ส่วนมากผมจะเลือกเลือกที่จะไม่ทําดีกว่าไปยุ่งพวกเด็กมุงเด็กแว้นอย่างเงี้ยถ้าแบบชอบอ่ะแบบมันมารวมกลุ่มกันแล้วผมชอบมันเป็นแกงเตอร์ดิแล้วก็สร้างทีมสร้างอะไรของเป็นของตัวเองเนี่ยมันดูเจ๋งกว่ามองแบบแข่งกันแบบมันๆสนุกๆแบบแบบให้โลกข้างโลกเขารับรู้หรือว่าคนไทยเจ๋งจริงไม่แพ้กับต่างชาติพักวันผมจะไปเหยียบประเทศของเขาสมพี่ปุ๋ยจะโซ่ close mind about things what you get from hip hop that's so small can be so much to somebody else You don't see a big picture where you know things can be better if everyone just gets together. Gets together. It's bigger, man. It's something that can take care of everyone. I first started the Jojing system in R16 when I was 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 in R16 이게 시간이 지나고 이제 그 시스템을 만든 디지와도 많은 대화를 통해서 느낀 거는 저징 시스템에 대해서 느낀 건 다시 한번 생각하게 됐다는 거예요. 저징 시스템을 음 이제 여러 가지 대회에 도입을 한다면 이제 음 비보이 배틀이란 게좀더 다른 의미로 이제 계속 커갈 텐데 그 한마디로 어 리그전처럼 혹은 그런 어떤 비보이 배틀 시즌처럼 야구 경기나 뭐 예를 들어서 스타크래프트 경기처럼 약간 좀더 다른 느낌의 배틀이 이제 만들어질 거라고 생각을 해요. 그리고 두 번째로는 그거보다 더 중요한 거는 우리 우리 자신이 어 다른 미디어나 다른 뭐 비보이를 이용하려는 사람들한테 좀더 우리를 보호할 수 있다고 생각을 해요. 그래서 저는 이 시스템이 음 그, 어 그렇게 나쁘게만 생각하지 않고 There's certain people in the scene who hold a certain amount of power. They might throw jams, or they might, you know, have a whole bunch of judges lined up and whatever. They might feel threatened by the system because they might think, "Oh, now I can't just choose my judges or choose my friends," or they might think, "Oh, well, this is what I think of b-boying, and I don't want to allow. I would, I would hate to see the day that another crew that that doesn't break like that wins." They feel to see that. This system will still like you know like it will still help them you know what I mean it will help them and their event even grow even bigger too. Like I said, people think maybe Dizzy's doing it you know for himself to make himself like big or to make himself rich. But I've worked together with him this past year and seen that that's not what he's doing. You know he works uh, with Cartel Creative together right now like. In and out, day and night, he pretty much stopped practicing. He's put a lot of things out. You know, um, if you look at his stuff on YouTube on the, our channel, he's got stuff. You know about his plan for the B Boys' future, about uh, what the association is, about what the judging system is. Or he just made a manual for 
um, the judges and the district representatives and stuff. At least look at all the information he has before going and judging it, you know. Se kantti kuitenkin pitää mielessä, että miten iso porukka tämä olisi sitten me ollut tekemässä, että siellä on ollut kaikki niitä oikea tyyppejä ja lajin legendoja tekemässä näitä dokumentteja, mikä perustella niin kuin mihin se perustuu se koko tuomarointi. Plus sitten Desilla on tietty vuosia ja vuosia, mitä se on kehittänyt koko systeemiä. Että niin kuin ei tämä ole mikään sutastu juttu, mikä, mikä niin kuin on vaan keksitty, että R16 näyttäisi hienolta, vaan niin kuin tässä on vuosia ja vuosia duunin takana. So the system is, is ready to go. It's just about the association aspect now. You know, getting people certified to, you know, because we're going to need a lot more judges. Getting more officials because we're going to need more people looking out, looking after the what are the breed sta the standards. It's tough though, right, to get you know the, these kind of people who are really passionate about seeing such a big thing or a big change like this. We're trying to provide opportunities for people that want to do what they keep doing, but at the same time they want to keep b-boying and help out the b-boying community. We're eventually trying to, you know, get this system implemented in countries around the world. And in order to do that, we need representatives in every country. That's what I see the future for b-boy, like a, a place where, you know, all b-boys, you know, whether you're like OGs, pioneers or legends or you're new, there's a place for everyone to make a living, you know. That's what I see. If b-boy can grow to that level, you know, if we can, if we can take it there. You know, the system, the association, we're trying to make non-for-profit. You know, we don't want any corruption involved, we don't want the media taking over. We're doing this for the b-boys. If we have a way to make everything concrete and documented, then, you know, then we have something, you know, for the future, we have hope. When we lived together, I would see, I saw this old agenda and I opened it up and it was like from his first goal ever, like, you know, he would have everything planned out. Like, this is what's going to, what's going to happen starting from like, you know, a list of one to 10 things that he's got to complete. And then everything he finished, he would take it out of his agenda and put it in his like finished pile. And he had like piles and piles of these. All he knows or loves is b-boying. So... He's been working on this thing forever. Dizzy's a hard worker. He works very hard. And, and then when he comes home to play, it's basically Facebook. So he can write about his b-boy Dizzy diaries. And then it's YouTube to look at like the latest, if there's any latest uploads based on him or his interviews or, you know, fan comments. And then it goes to all his fan mails where he goes and prides himself on like, answering each fan mail like individually um yeah i could barely get like a foot massage in at the end of the day like i'll come home tired from work i'll be like can i get a five minute foot foot rub <laughs> and he'll be like what there's his add it's it's funneled into like his b-boying everything is cool we make dinner eating and now it's like two o'clock in the morning where I have to wake up in the morning. But right before I go to bed, she's like, can I get a foot massage? <laughs> a foot massage? It's two o'clock, I gotta sleep at work. So you never give me a massage. And I'll get home at 11 p.m. and I haven't eaten in seven hours and Dizzy will always have dinner on the table. So sweet. Dizzy. Yeah, like I said, he, you know, goofs around a lot. He's always fun to joke with. But uh, he always, you know, you can tell he has like a direction. He knows what he's doing all the time, which is, you know, kind of cool to see in a person. He wants, you know, everybody to like be organized together, whether it's his association or someone else's association. He's all for it. This, this is something that's his passion, his dreams and his goals. It's all part of who he is and something that he has to do it because it's it's from his heart. That's one of the things I love about him. I really honestly believe that that's, it's the reason why I'm supposed to be here because it's, that's what God wants me to do. <laughs> it sounds crazy. In 98, I didn't think that there was ever gonna be anything like this. A lot of people told me, yo, why are you doing this? Why are you breaking? And they thought it was gonna be a bum. I thought it was gonna be nothing. 
The hardest thing about this job is that uh, the boys are too used to being rebels. This judging system kind of says that there is no right way, that everyone's way is equal and it's valid. You know, trying to get people to unite, you know what I mean? That's gonna be the hard part. No one respects breaking outside of b-boys. You know, now I'm not talking about like 15 year old girls at high school parties. I'm talking about like grown ups. No one wants to say it, but they look at us just like, you know, like little punks and youths and whatever. They don't take us seriously. And we know that we're better than that, you know? And yeah, just think about that, right? Why we need to come together and as we grow older, yeah, we have to fix things, right? Like we have to make, find ways to unite the community and protect the culture, right? So yeah, that's it. It's <laughs> a lot, okay. Pedro, let's shoot that rap video. Kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you got into this camera shit. I dread to wonder what you do in the, in the bed with this shit. Yo, I saw an old lady walking down the street last year with a Battle of the Year t-shirt on. I was like, what? Yeah, like out in the country too. Like, yeah. this is crazy. Nyt kyllä tarvii lisää kahvia tai epä. foot massage. It's more like, can you really, really rub my feet? Because they kill. <laughs>